Number 54, letter A. Calculate the energy in kilojoules. Used by a 55 kilogram woman who does 50 deep knee bends in which her center of mass is lowered and raised 0.4 meters. She does work in both directions. You may assume her efficiency is 20%. All right, so first, um, I'm just going to simplify this problem down to a single point. All right, that'll be the woman's center of mass. This center of mass weighs 55 uh, kilograms, and it, she's going to do 50 knee, uh, deep knee bends, right, in which she goes down and then comes back up 50 times. And the distance that will be covered during that period is going to be 0.4 meters in each direction. So just realize, though, that 50 deep knee bends requires 50 down and then 50 up. So it's really a total of 100 you know, uh, phases, essentially. So let me first focus on a free body diagram that details this downward uh, trajectory, okay? So actually, they're both going to be the same. The only difference is in terms of the distance that the uh, center mass is traveling. So she has a certain, so what are the forces going on here? So she has a certain uh, mass, right, 55 kilograms, and therefore she's also going to have a certain weight. So therefore the weight of her will point down. That should be pretty straightforward. This is the weight, right? And the distance, since I'm highlighting this part, the distance that's being traveled is also in the downward direction. But now it didn't say explicitly, but I am assuming that the uh, weight, meaning her body, she's lowering it at a rate with zero acceleration, meaning a constant velocity. So there's a constant velocity going down, and then there's a constant velocity going up. And obviously I know that when, you know, at the, at the low point, if her velocity is down this way and then it goes up this way, obviously there was some change, you know, in velocity here that required an acceleration, but I don't know over what distance that that's happening. So I, I have to simplify the problem to, to just say that when she goes down, she immediately turns back up and the acceleration is almost whatever instantaneous or something. So the important point here though, is that if the, the velocity is down, right, but the acceleration is zero, what that means is that the forces in this problem have to be exactly equal but opposite. So therefore, there must be a force pointing up that opposes the weight, all right? So now, this is the force that I'll call it opposes the weight, all right? And this is the force that she is then applying, all right? Now, if I highlight uh, this arrow, right, it's basically the same diagram. Let me do it over here, right? She still has the same weight, all right, the weight is down. So here's the weight. Okay, whoops, here's the weight. Um, the difference though is now the velocity is up, right? The velocity is up and therefore the distance covered is also in that same direction. Or maybe I should write comma D here in comma D. There's no acceleration and therefore that force will be actually the same in this problem, right? The F O W. So these both are the same. The only difference is right in terms of the directions of the velocities and distances. So now what I want to do is let me look at each case individually. So let me look at, I'll call this uh, case one. All right. And let me calculate uh, what's going on there. So I have to find the uh, work essentially being done, right? Because I have to find the energy that she is exerting here. And she's exerting that energy over a certain distance, right? And a force. So I'm thinking about using this equation on the right-hand side, All right? So this says that the work done is equal to the force applied multiplied by the distance over which that force is applied multiplied by the cosine of the angle between these two vectors, All right? So the work done by the woman is the force applied by the woman over the distance the woman is traveling, okay? So let's detail this. So the force that the woman is applying in case one is in this upward direction, right? It's the force that opposes the weight. Okay, so let me write that in. So actually, um, yeah, act actually one, one step, hold on one second, guys. So this FOW, right, if I know that there's zero acceleration, these forces must balance because the sum of the forces have to equal zero. So then FOW minus W is equal to zero, right? And therefore FOW is equal to W. All right, I just have to state that. So now I know that the force that the woman is applying to oppose her weight is exactly equal to her weight. Okay, so instead of writing FW here, I can write just her weight. Okay, and I'll put a little T down there for weight so we don't confuse it with this work. All right, and then the distance, right, the woman covers, great, multiplied by the cosine of the angle. 
So the work that she's doing here is going to be equal to her weight. So what's her weight? Her weight is her mass, 55 kilograms multiplied by 9.80. Now what's the distance that's being covered? Now focus over here. The distance that's being covered is actually in the negative direction, right? It's going down. And therefore it's 0.4 meters, but the value here is going to be point, oops, it's going to be negative 0.4, right? So that's good. And then what's the cosine of the angle between the force that the woman applies and the distance that she covers? Well, look, right? The force that she's applying and the distance that's covered are opposite in direction. And therefore the dist and therefore the angle there is 180 degrees. Now this should make sense because this negative will cancel with this negative. Right? And therefore the work she's doing is positive here. All right? But I know sometimes a lot of us struggle with the signs and whatnot, but um, this should hopefully make it make a little more sense. So 55 times 9.8 times negative 0.4 times cosine of 180. And we get a positive 215.6 and we'll just say 216, okay? So this is 216 uh, uh, joules. Okay. Great. That was in case one. Now guess what we're going to do? Case two. All right, so let's talk about case two. Same formula, I'm just gonna jump right down to this step, okay? So the work done by the woman is equal to her weight times the distance she's covering times the cosine of the angle between the force vector and the distance. So the work she's doing is equal to her weight, which is, actually, you know what? Let me just move this over slight. Eh, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, her weight, so 55 times 9.80, times then the uh, distance, you know what? A lot of you know what's. Let me move this over a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, so now times the distance that she's covering. So let's take a look at the picture. The distance now is in the positive y direction. So therefore this value over here, 0.4 is positive. So 0 0.4 and then times the cosine of the angle now, bet excuse me, between the distance and the force. Well, look, they're in the same direction. So therefore the cosine there is zero, right? Cosine is zero. So now the weight, uh, excuse me, the work that she is performing, too many Ws, I say this all the time, but so 55 times 9.8 times 0.4. So this is again, no surprise, 216 about, right? 216, and this is in terms of joules. So that's great. So now when I take these two uh, results here and I add them together, right? And I add, now I have to, well, let me not, remember, I have to add these two results together. Um, and this would give me then the energy of one full knee bend, down and up, okay? So let me do, so let's just add this together. So actually, you know what, probably what might be best is to take, um, I'm just trying to think, if I were to combine these formulas, yeah, so we'll get it. If we add these two numbers together, obviously we're going to get uh, 432. Uh, but if I if I extended this on out a little more, meaning in terms of sig figs, I would have got 231. So let us, uh, excuse me, 431. So let me just use that number, okay? So uh, really this number was really 215.6. So if I double that, it becomes 431.2, and I'll round that one, just so that we're not too far off from the end, okay? So when I add these two together, it's going to be 431. Uh, so that's in terms of joules. All right. That would be a 0.2. And then I have to take that value, and that's only one knee bend, but she does 50 of them. So I got to just multiply that by 50. Right. And here we get 2.16 about. Right. Now I can round a little bit. So 2.16 times 10 raised to the, what do we got? Four. And that's in terms of joules. So this would be the final answer for letter A. Well, no, 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 no. That's not the final answer because I just went back and, and saw that it says assume her efficiency is 20%. All right, so this is not the final answer. What was this? What is this answer? Well, this is the, this is the energy uh, needed, all right, uh, to perform this work. That's what we just calculated. But now her efficiency is 20%. So now, okay, so now it's a long problem, right? So now I have to consider this formula over here on the right-hand side. 
All right, so let me write that down, that the efficiency is equal to the work put out divided by the energy in. So this is what we just calculated right here. This is the energy that she has to put out. This is the work she must do in order to do her 50 knee bends. So meaning we just calculated this, okay? They told us the efficiency is uh, po uh, 0.2 essentially, right, 20%, and now I can find the energy that she must have consumed, right, uh, or metabolized. So this is 0.2. Actually, let me just solve this for energy in, right? Energy in will simply be the work out over the efficiency, all right? I'm just gonna erase this just to save space, so now I'm gonna put the work out, which was 2.16 times 10 to the fourth, divide that then by the efficiency of 0.2, and now we find that the energy in is going to be, so 2.16 times 10 to the fourth divided by 0.2, all right, so it's about 100, so yeah, 108,000, so 1.08, times 10 raised to the fifth, All right? That's in terms of joules. Now, did they, want it to, did they want the answer in joules? Of course not, they wanted it in kilojoules. So what do we have to do? All we have to simply do is divide this by 1000 or just subtract three from that exponent. So finally, 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 the answer I'll put at the upper right of the upper left, excuse me, so 1 1.08 times 10 to the minus, not minus, what am I doing? Times 10 to the two kilojoules. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a little busy figuring out where I'm putting all the work. <laughs> all right. So next question or next part, what is the average power consumption rate in watts if she does this in three minutes? So I'm looking at my formulas down on the right hand side and I want to uh, right highlight then the this formula over here. This says that the power is equal to the work divided by the time. So power is equal to the work put out, divided by the time, and, uh, oh no, excuse me, her average power consumption rate. No, never mind. So the power consumption, so she is, this is the energy that she's metabolizing. So it's actually not the, we could, we could answer either question, but the question here specifically is asking for the average power consumption, meaning the uh, power due to the metabolism of her, you know, energy. So I have to use this value then in my calculation, okay? Um, so let's now do, so power will equal then the work done, right? Or the energy put into this process was this value. So 1.08 times 10 to the five joules. I can't use the kilojoule value. I have to have this in joules. And then divide that by, well, it says three minutes, but remember, I need this value down here in seconds. So I'm just gonna do the conversion down here. It'd be three times 60, right? Because that would tell me how many seconds. So this would simply be divided by three times 60. And we get about 600, right? We get about 600. And that is uh, watts, okay? So that would then be your final answer for letter uh, B. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Definitely helps us out tremendously and also enables us to reach more students just like yourself. So um, if we've helped you in any way, that'd be a very easy way for you to give us just a little hand. And uh, again, I would thank you so, so very much for that. It really does mean a lot. And I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care now.